Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, December 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, quite the patch Tuesday uh, today and a little spoiler alert here, but we got uh, three different uh, companies uh, patching vulnerabilities that are already being exploited in the wild. So let's start with Microsoft, of course, who sort of invented, I guess, a patch Tuesday. And uh, for the last patch Tuesday of the year, we got patches for 74 vulnerabilities, which includes the uh, Chromium fixes for Microsoft Edge. Not everybody sort of considers them Microsoft uh, patches. And seven of the vulnerabilities that were patched are rated as critical. One has been previously disclosed and one is already being exploited. Now the already exploited vulnerability is a problem with the Windows smart screen feature. That's something I've mentioned a few times before and some of its weaknesses in Windows. The problem here is this mark of the web, uh, this uh, extended data stream that's being added to uh, mark files that were downloaded from the web to treat them differently if the user then attempts to open uh, these files. Not technically a vulnerability, uh, but uh, something that's included as an advisory in this update is issues with drivers that are assigned using Microsoft's uh, developer uh, program. Apparently, some of uh, the certificates are very used uh, for lateral movement by the Cuba ransomware and Microsoft now revoked uh, those certificates. And then we got uh, one vulnerability here that um, was publicly uh, known, but hasn't apparently been used in any exploit yet. And that's a uh, DirectX graphics kernel elevation of a privilege of vulnerability. A couple other uh, noteworthy uh, vulnerabilities here. There is a remote code execution vulnerability in the .NET framework, less likely to be exploited according to Microsoft, but a CVSS score of 8.8. And then we do have a remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft SharePoint server, same CVSS score for uh, this vulnerability. So also something considered uh, critical. And finally, a remote code execution vulnerability in a PowerShell. According to the advisory, it's less likely to be exploited. It's a high complexity of actually exploiting this vulnerability, but I guess you know, it's one of those things we'll have to see uh, how creative the attackers are exploiting this vulnerability. That's the quick summary here, what we have from Microsoft. So patch, patch relatively quickly, nothing sort of outrageous here that you need to patch uh, today but by the end of next week uh, definitely before the holidays you probably want to have a good handle on uh, these patches and then we got uh, patches from apple and apple in its usual fashion did pretty much update everything there were updates for ios mac os tv os and then also a watch os so pretty much all the actively used uh, operating systems are being uh, patched here for iOS and macOS. We also have patched for the current version as well as for the prior version. There's one a WebKit vulnerability that's already being exploited in the wild. Uh, this vulnerability does affect uh, iOS and macOS. Now, the exploit uh, that is seen in the wild uh, was uh, before iOS 15.1. In addition uh, to uh, patches, uh, we also have a couple new security features uh, with uh, this release of iOS and macOS. With this Apple does roll out its enhanced security features that I already mentioned. So now it's possible to end-to-end -end encrypt, for example, your iCloud backups. There's also interesting uh, features of designate uh, account recovery contact. Uh, I think that's actually a feature that makes a lot of sense if you have like a family member or uh, someone else that you trust uh, in case you lose access to your credentials. 
that uh, account, that account recovery contact can sort of essentially vouch for you. I still have to play with this. Uh, one thing I noted when setting it up, if you have any old devices that cannot be updated uh, to the uh, current version of uh, iOS, in that case, you first have to remove them from your account before you're able to activate uh, this uh, feature. And the third company patching an already exploited vulnerability today is Citrix. Citrix released an update for Citrix ADC and Citrix Gateway. You're affected if you're running a recent 12 or 13 version. If you have it configured with a SAML SP or IDP configuration, there is is no workaround according to Citrix. Not sure if you can just uh, disable that SAML configuration, but that probably breaks uh, all kinds of access control uh, to your uh, device. A patch is available. It is already being exploited. So Citrix uh, recommends to apply the patch as soon as possible. And if you have some time between applying all these patches, uh, the new episode of Packet Tuesday is out as well. PacketTuesday.com will get you to the latest uh, episode. I'll be talking about uh, the recent uh, vulnerability in free BSD uh, ping and IP options. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.